Hi guys, Dan the bodybuilder from Thailand back here to talk to you today about what is blasting and cruising steroids and how that affects your fertility and also to talk to you about your fertility and how that works and uh, how, what makes you fertile, what makes you unfertile and why. After watching this video, you're going to understand the mechanisms behind why you are fertile or not fertile and how steroids do that. And you're not going to have to rely on having someone tell you anymore if what you're doing is going to be okay or if it's okay because you're going to know okay all right so i'm going to read to you guys a section from my book ultimate guide to roids it's a 109 page ebook that is uh talking all about bodybuilding as you see it so it's got all these pages here and uh it talks about in brutal honesty, what you've got to do in order to get the physiques that you see, that the ones that you aspire to look like, you know, the guys that you look up to, even if that involves drug abuse, which most of it does, even if they're not big, you know, um, it, most of it still does require, if they're, they don't have to be a huge bodybuilder. Uh, most of it requires drug abuse, guys. That's, that's the cold, hard reality. And that's why no one would be willing to do the things that it takes to get there, just if you said this is what you got to do and you didn't already start. It's a thing of like, well, you're already in this deep and now you just keep on going. <laughs> so I'm very brutally honest about this in this book, Ultimate Guide to Roids. And, um, you know, even if it is irresponsible what these guys do in order to get those looks, I tell you what they're doing, okay? So... It's been, a, it's been long enough that the population and that everybody's been kept in the dark. These things are used by lots of people. Let's get the information out there, all right? There's a link to where you can download the book and in the description and in the comment section of the video. All right, so let's get into reading this. The first thing that I'm going to read you is going to be the section from Ultimate Guide to Roids on HCG and the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. It's called the HPTA, okay? Human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG, is the hack to keep your balls full and at normal size, still producing natural testosterone while using steroids at the same time. Normally, any type of steroid use will cause your testicles to shrink. The balls shrink because of a very sensitive feedback loop between your endocrine system and the brain. The feedback loop is called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and abbreviated in men as the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis, HPTA. The HPTA is how your body controls how much testosterone it produces. When testosterone levels are low, the hypothalamus, which is part of your brain, releases gonadotrophin releasing hormone known as GnRH, that's the abbreviation. Gonadotropin releasing hormone then travels to pituitary gland located in the upper, like back here area of the brain. The gonadotropin releasing hormone causes the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone, which then stimulates the testicles to produce testosterone. The hypothalamus is suppressed by the presence of testosterone and other androgens. It is also suppressed by high amounts of estrogen. When sufficient testosterone or androgen concentrations in the body are detected by the hypothalamus, it shuts off and ceases releasing gonadotrophin-releasing hormone. When gonadotrophin-releasing hormone is no longer being released, then the pituitary is not stimulated to release luteinizing hormone, and the testicles have no signal to cause them to produce testosterone. In response to this situation, the testicles shrink. HCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin, is an analog of luteinizing hormone. That means that it has the same function in the body. An analog is a hormone that is not chemically identical to the original substance, but produces the same effects. A simple way to put it is that when you inject HCG into your body, it is recognized by the testicles as luteinizing hormone HCG is similar enough in structure to luteinizing hormone that the body recognizes it as luteinizing hormone and it has the same effects in the body as luteinizing hormone. 
HCG directly communicates with the testicles to send the message to produce testosterone. Since HCG directly communicates with the testicles, it bypasses the need of having a hypothalamus release gonad via gonadotropin releasing hormone to stimulate the pituitary production of luteinizing hormone. Instead, HCG use is like injecting yourself with straight luteinizing hormone that your pituitary gland would normally release. If you're using steroids, your hypothalamus will detect the presence of androgens, male hormones. When the hypothalamus detects androgens, it shuts off and ceases production of gonadotropin releasing hormone. This pre prevents the pituitary gland from receiving the signal to produce luteinizing hormone, that which then stimulates the testicles to produce testosterone. By using HCG, we bypass the whole system and inject ourselves with the direct chemical that our testicles need to function. Injecting HCG keeps your testicles functioning in the presence of androgens. You can use steroids and HCG at the same time and maintain the size of your testicles and your fertility. There are many different HCG protocols out there. HCG seems to begin to have an effect at a dosage of 250 IU taken two times weekly. That's anecdotally, that's not medical, that's anecdotally. Many doctors use HCG simultaneous with patients receiving injections of testosterone for testosterone replacement therapy. Then I go into what these doctors usually prescribe their patients. I'm gonna cut that section out here because uh, I think that YouTube's too sensitive for that. Okay, after learning about this consensus among HCG dosage for hormone replacement doctors, I applied their protocol to my own body while using steroid cycles and I found it to be very effective in preventing the shrinkage of my testicles and also with increasing the volume of semen I shoot out of my penis. HCG is a drug that you don't want to mess around with and take huge dosages above what is recommended. If you take more HCG than is recommended for a prolonged period of time, you risk desensitizing your testicles to the effect of luteinizing hormone. If this happens, you will not be able to restore the size of your testicles or your fertility until you stop using HCG and allow your testicles sufficient time to resensitize to luteinizing hormone. All right, so a couple thoughts about that, and then we're gonna go to the blasting and cruising versus cycling section of Ultimate Guide to Roids. Um, so HCG, I always use it now. Um, you know, I used to not use it. I used to use it like, like uh, Cycla, you know, sometimes I'd use it, and usually I'd use it I don't know, like at like a thousand I use maybe twice a week when I would do that or three times a week. Um, you know, I'd do that for maybe two months and then wouldn't use it again for months. Um, but I don't like having small testicles, okay? Like a lot of steroid users say like, oh, like I don't need my testicles, what do they do? But like, no, that that's like, that's an acquired thing that like over time, somebody who's like out of their minds would start thinking like that, right? No, I like to have my balls, okay? And so I keep the HCG in all year round, okay? Like testosterone replacement therapy. And you know, I have nice, I use steroids, but at the same time, <laughs> I have full-size testicles. And dude, this is so much superior than the other way of not having full-size testicles, dude. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit, dude. It's way better, because now I'm like, fucking, like, I think about it sometimes, because I'm like, oh my God, man, like, I know like not a lot of people do this, and I'll be doing cardio, and I'll feel like my balls like getting in the way of my legs and shit and uh, having to be adjusting a lot, right, and shit. And I'm like, shit, back before when I wasn't using HCG year round, I was not doing this. <laughs> really, man, really, this is real stuff, all right? All right, now we're going to the bro science, blasting and cruising versus cycling from Ultimate Guide to Roids. All right, let's read this. Most people know that a steroid cycle means cycling on and off of steroids. Doing an anabolic steroid cycle means you spend time on steroids and you spend time off steroids. But what is blasting and cruising? You may have heard of guys who never come off steroids. This is usually referring to guys who blast and cruise. This means that they cycle periods of intense, high dosage steroid use with periods of low dose maintenance steroid use. A common way 
to blast and cruise would be to do testosterone replacement therapy and always be on 250 milligrams testosterone per week year round. Maybe three times per year you do a 10 week steroid cycle on top of your TRT. Those three 10 week steroid cycles would be the blast in blast and cruise. When you weren't on those steroid cycles, you would be doing a cruise or muscle maintenance phase where you would let your body recover and return to normal by only using your 250 milligrams testosterone for TRT each week with nothing else. The period on only 250 milligrams testosterone per week would be the bodybuilder's cruise phase during his blasting and cruising protocol. Blasting and cruising is what serious bodybuilders who are really big do. Personally, I alternate between blasting and cruising and short breaks from hormones altogether. About three times per year, I just stop taking everything for a month or for six weeks. I let any and all bodybuilding substances just drain out of my body completely during those times. Then I start up again with another cycle. Sometimes when I am cruising between steroid cycles, I will do two or three months of TRT with 250 milligrams testosterone per week only. I end up being on cycle about six months of the year and either doing TRT or taking nothing for the other six months of the year. For a bodybuilder that is gonna use hormones and anabolic androgenic steroids, regularly cycling on and off is impractical. PCT is not fun. You go through mood swings and usually some light bouts of low mood during the four to six week recovery period. You feel weak and fatigued. During PCT, you have to use PCT drugs, which have their own side effects and strains on your system. I just don't see the point of going on steroids, shutting off your natural production, then going off steroids, going on steroids, shut off your natural production, then going off steroids, losing the gains made on cycle, and trying to recover your natural testosterone production. Then as soon as your natural pr testosterone production turns back on, starting another steroid cycle and turning off natural test again. That doesn't make sense to me. That is like a roller coaster. I prefer stability and smooth transitions. Since I'm going, since I know I'm going to be using male hormones and steroids for years, instead of doing PCT after finishing a steroid cycle, I just take periods of taking nothing, including no PCT drugs for four to six weeks, and then other periods of taking 250 milligrams testosterone per week for TRT during the cruise phase, while using no other bodybuilding drugs. Using the blasting and cruising approach, my life is much smoother while using steroids. I don't have as many ups and downs as PCT causes me. If you are worried about blasting and cruising affecting your fertility, refer to the HCG section of the book that we just read from. There you can read about how the HPTA, hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis functions to control fertility, and how it turns on and off in response to the presence of certain hormones. If you understand the process of fertility and your testicles functioning properly, then you will gain a lot of peace of mind when you are making decisions about your steroid use and deciding what kind of risks you are willing to take. All steroid use has risks. Taking steroids in the most intelligent and controlled manner to maximize gains and minimize damage should be your highest priority. Choosing whether steroid cycling or blasting and cruising is the best choice for you is a personal decision. You shouldn't feel pressured to immediately make a decision about it. Maybe you prefer to do a couple steroid cycles first and then decide whether or not you want to switch to blasting and cruising. All right, guys, so that was an excerpt from the checks section on blasting and cruising versus cycling from the 109-page ebook by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand, Ultimate Guide to Roids. This is the book. I was reading from that, and... Uh, it's the best thing that's ever come out for the bodybuilding community and industry. It's all the secret fucking information that's all guarded that you want to know. That is, uh, those are like uh, pictures of me comparing different drugs and stuff, like my physique on and off different drugs. Anyways, yeah, the link is in the, to get the book that I'm reading here. It's in the description of the video and it's in the comment section. Enjoy, guys. Dan, the bodybuilder from Thailand.